All right. Well, welcome and uh, thank you. Thank you very much for being here today. So my name is David Ryder. I'm a solutions engineer at Grafana Labs and I'm based in Oakland in the Bay Area. I have four cats and uh, hopefully they hopefully they won't uh, hopefully they won't uh, interfere with my presentation today. Um, so my intent today is to provide an overview of cardinal cardinality analysis for Prometheus metrics. And the goal is to help you use this to kind of reduce cost, reduce costs and complexity. And when we talk about, um, you know, one of the things that I've kind of, uh, you know, in my role as a solutions engineer, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with many customers, right? And something that I've come to realize is that every customer's business critical services are com complex, they're different, and they're different across multiple dimensions, like technologies, scale, performance, visibility, the volumes of ingest data and query performance that they require to kind of run those business services. And for scale, it can be related to the number of customers they have and the number of transactions that those customers actually send through, send through the systems. So I've seen customers, you know, myself, um, who themselves have customers in the range of like 10 million or 90 million and a respective number of transactions per second associated with those customers. And so to maintain the reliability and be able to identify and investigate issues in these large scale deployments, they need access to metrics. They actually need access to metrics, logs and traces. Um, and what we see is that the number of metrics scales with the number of customers, the number of services, the number of transactions, and the number of geographic locations that they have uh, with, within the business, very much like Roblox um, and the way that, that, system, that, that system scales. So the cardinality of Prometheus metrics. So what is the cardinality of Prometheus Prometheus metrics. Um, so if you take the number of unique metric names, the labels, and you take the product of the metric label values, you can calculate the cardinality of your metrics. And I got a, re a real simple real simple example here. I've got three metrics, each have got two labels, and each labels have four values. And so if you multiply that out, you get to 48. So I have 48 unique metrics, and each provides a new data point or a sample in my in my active time series. However, if you had a thousand metrics and you had just two labels and each label had a thousand label values each, you'd actually have a cardinality of a billion. And that's a lot of metrics to ingest, store, and query. And it can impact your ability to kind of investigate issues. It can impact the performance of your Prometheus systems or, or your metric systems. So the cardinality of metrics, it tells us the number of unique metrics, including the labels and values. And this is often referred to as active series met metrics. And so for the purpose of sizing and cost analysis, we can look at two things, active series metrics and data points per minute. So the data points per minute relates to the number of times per minute you send metrics. And in Prometheus terms, it's the scrape in interval. So typically that is like 60 seconds or less it depends upon your use case and your requirements for visibility. So this is useful for sizing. If you run and manage your own Prometheus system, or it's useful for cost modeling if you want to send metrics to Grafana Cloud. Um, and so using active series and the number of data points per minute, you can calculate the cost of ingestion and storing metrics. So using Grafana, for visualization, you can easily create a cardinality analysis dashboard using queries against your Prometheus internal metrics and internal labels, such as the underscore name label. And so in this example dashboard, I'm visualizing the total number of metrics, I'm visualizing the total metrics with the highest cardinality, and I'm visualizing the total active series metrics that I have. And again, I've really, in this, in this example, I've got 48 active series metrics. So this is actually really useful because you can use these queries to create alerts to monitor if things change in your environments. So for example, if the number of active series metrics increased above a specific threshold, you could trigger alert, you could look at that alert, and then you could investigate what's going on in your environments and why, why is the number of active series metrics increasing or why is the, number of, why is the cardinality of a particular metric uh, increasing also. So taking this a little bit a step further, built into Grafana metrics, we've added three cardinality analysis dashboards that provide interactive workflows to allow you to explore the cardinality of metrics, labels, and label values. And these disk dashboards also provide tips to help you navigate that process. So from this dashboard overview, you can click into a particular metric to explore its labels. 
So for example, if I click into the web duration metric, you can see the labels that are associated with it. And you can also see the label values for this metric. And so from the metric dashboard, you can click into a particular label. And here you can see the values associated with the label location and what metrics use this label. So you can see the, the label values being the, the location names of airports like Dallas or London Heathrow or San Francisco. So to help with the process of cardinality analysis, to help you reduce costs and complexity, what I've done is I put together some discovery topics and questions that I found useful with customers to take them through this process. So starting with your data architecture, I think it's important to understand the volume, the velocity of the data that you have. And then looking at your dashboards and alerts, what metrics are used in dashboards and alerts and what metrics are used in recording rules, for example. And then in terms of root causing, root cause analysis and investigating issues outside of the metrics that are used in dashboards and alerts, what metrics are used to actually identify and root cause issues? Because they're very likely important metrics that you want to you keep within your system. And then the process of reducing cardinality are the metrics that can be dropped, are the labels that can be dropped, are the labels with high cardinality values still relevant? And could they be, could they be dropped themselves? And then just kind of looking forward into the future, you know, what type of factors are driving growth in your business and your organizations? And how might, imp how might this impact the growth of metrics or the cardinality of the labels? So you can use the cardinality analysis dashboard to identify metrics that can be reduced. And you can remove these metrics from your services. Now, this may involve making changes to the source code of your services. It may also involve changes to the configuration of the Prometheus exporters that scrape those metrics. You can also leverage the Prometheus limits and relabel actions in the, in the Prometheus configuration to drop them at collection time. So here are some of the actual Grafana agent and Prometheus configuration limits and relabel options available to reduce the number of metrics or to prevent additional labels being added to metrics. And then finally, you know, cardinality analysis is a very popular topic. And this is a list of some uh, really useful reference documents and, and blogs that have been published by my colleagues on, the, on this subject. And we'll publish these out to you after this session. And then thank you very much. It's, uh, you know, really value, value, value your time and that's it.